Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, October 17th, 5.42 a.m. Central Time. As I speak here, December corn futures down three quarters of a cent at 6.89. November soybeans down one and a half at 13.82 and a quarter. December Chicago wheat up 13 and a quarter at 8.73 and a quarter last trade. December Kansas City wheat up 12 and three quarters at 9.65. December spring wheat up 15 at 9.69 and a quarter. If you guys are listening on the podcast, appreciate it as always. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the like button. Uh, leave me a comment if you've got yield updates, crop updates, basis updates, any sort of opinion on anything that I say here. Those comments really help YouTube to spread out these videos and help me to grow this channel. Uh, really appreciate it as always, guys. If you'd like some additional information from me, visit my website, www.standardgrain.com. Check out my premium subscription service today. I send my premium subscribers a ton of information direct from me every single business day. Morning email goes out about 5.30 a.m. Central. In that email, you'll see every overnight headline you need to be aware of. Uh, charts, graphics, weather information, all of my grain marketing recommendations. My daily subscriber-only videos are part of this deal. On Friday, we talked very specifically about 2023 grain marketing corn, soybeans, and wheat. I had a lot of questions along these lines. Is it too early to use options when it comes to 2023? I kind of gave my opinion on that, on marketing next year's crops in general. Um, if you guys are interested in this sort of content, this one was, was very specific to grain marketing, especially. Uh, sign up today, 50 bucks a month, cancel at any time. No other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else, I promise. Some more escalation in Ukraine uh, overnight. Russia attacked Ukraine's capital with a wave of kamikaze drones. Kiev's mayor said that the drones caused four explosions that rocked the city's central district in the early morning hours. Strikes were also noted in the southern port city of Odessa, in addition to other areas of the country's central and northeastern regions. Ukraine's Zelensky said this, all night and all morning, the enemy terrorizes the civilian population. Kamikaze drones and missiles attack all of Ukraine. Uh, Zelensky warned earlier this month about Russia's increased use of these Iranian-made drones, which pose new challenges for Ukrainian forces. Um, the West is going to send, uh, the United States in particular, we're going to send more weapons and money to Ukraine. The Pentagon announced on Friday that the U.S. will send a new wave of military aid to Ukraine, including missiles, rockets, and anti-tank weapons. Uh, Biden spoke to Zelensky on the phone last week and said that the U.S. would provide additional air defense systems. And that's a measure that the White House had been kind of reluctant to take previously, just because I, I suppose they're worried about escalation between not Ukraine and Russia, but the United States and Russia. And Putin, based on what he said, you know, he kind of thinks he's in a proxy war with the United States anyways, which is, is true to some extent. But in any case, escalation in that situation, that's probably uh, part of the reason, at least, why wheat prices are higher here early this morning. Bloomberg reports that Russia has been laundering stolen Ukrainian grain. This is not the first story I've heard along these lines. I think Bloomberg had something similar to this uh, several weeks or maybe a couple months ago. But reporters at Bloomberg used satellite images, uh, loading and unloading data, vessel location transmitters to track activity of some Russian vessels. One shipping consultant said this, uh, they, Russia, are using ship-to-ship -ship transfers between legitimate and illegitimate illegitimate products to mix them in in order to try to launder them into a legitimate supply chain. They are working to launder the grain to create a degree of legitimacy or clarity of title so that they can engage in transactions with countries that really need the grain. Uh, this is not surprising by any means. Um, I, I don't know like what the implications are necessarily when it comes to uh, supply and demand and the markets, but uh, just a, another kind of like indication of just how crazy things are in the Black Sea, I suppose. Water levels on the Mississippi River remain critically low. The CEO of American Commercial Barge told the Wall Street Journal last week, America is going to shut down if we shut down. So the low water levels continue to clog up entire sections of the river. You guys know the story by now. The uh, weather forecasts this morning suggest maybe a little bit of relief in the extended forecast. So the next seven days, really not much of anything. But when you go out to this, like, uh, say, 7 to 15 day period, the maps are calling for above normal precipitation for a lot of these river valley areas. And that would be very, very welcome. Uh, that's something that could help to improve the river situation if realized. Of course, weather and rainfall, you know, more than five or six, day, six days 
out. It's it's difficult to predict, but the uh, government maps look uh, a little bit better this morning. I was looking at the GFS run suggests that you see some rain uh, return to a lot of areas of the Mississippi River Valley uh, during that period from, say, uh, you know, seven days from now out through the end of the month. So uh, we'll see what happens, but it looks a little bit, uh, this, this looks promising, I guess, but I don't know if this forecast comes to fruition or not. We do have a NOPA crush report this morning. The National Oilseed Processors Association will release uh, September crush data at 11 a.m. Central. Ahead of the report, traders estimate that NOPA members crushed 161.6 million bushels of soybeans in September. That would be down 2% versus August, but up 5% versus the same month last year. Uh, just like ethanol production, you can uh, generally expect better crush numbers in October and November as harvest soybean deliveries arrive at processing plants. So this isn't going to be like a fantastic number today. Uh, the October numbers should be quite a bit better, I'd imagine. Corn and wheat export sales were not good last week. USDA released a holiday-delayed export sales report on Friday. Net corn sales for the current marketing year totaled just like 200,000 uh, below trade expectations. Not good at all. Wheat sales also poor at uh, 212. Soybean sales were okay at 725. China was the largest buyer, buyer accounting for 86% of that total. We also saw Ch China uh, back in for some flash sales last week. When you look at commitments, uh, accumulated for the current marketing year accumulated corn commitments for the current marketing year are the third worst of the last 10 years so not good uh, in regard to corn a lot of that's because china uh, has really backed off as a buyer of u.s corn soybean commitments are still good despite slower purchases as of late uh, fourth best of the last 10 years accumulated soybean commitments here's a stat for you accumulated wheat commitments uh, export sales for the current marketing year are the worst since 2006 so we have just uh, totally priced ourselves out of the export market when it comes to wheat. Large money managers or the funds have been net buyers of corn and net sellers of soybeans as of late. CFTC had its weekly commitment of traders report out on Friday. This data is accurate as of Tuesday, October 11th. Uh, in the week ending October 11th, funds were net buyers of 26,000 contracts of corn, net sellers of 11,000 contracts of soybeans. So this net long in the corn market is approaching what I would call extreme territory. Historically, not quite extreme, but you're, you're toward the upper end. Uh, soybeans, this is more of a modest net long, and this is actually the lightest net long since December uh, in the soybean market. This net short of about 20,000 contracts in SRW wheat is, is modest historically. Guys, November grain options expire on Friday. If you've got any positions there, make sure you take a look. Uh, the cattle market was kind of a mixed bag Friday. Live cattle were marginally higher, feeder cattle lower. Cash trade was 146 to 148 in the north and mostly 145 in the south uh, last week. The U.S. dollar is a little bit lower this morning. The stock market's higher. Uh, the S&P's up 41. The Dow's up about 280. Uh, bonds are up a little bit. Gold's up 12 bucks. Crude oil up 44 cents at 85.09 in the December WTI. Have a great week, guys. I'll talk to you tomorrow.